Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and we are navigating the journey. And our journey today is one of the most important that we will do. And that's because we are a Democratic Party, and this is the Democratic system that we live in, even the Republicans, and that is about the legislature and voting. And our guest today is Representative Mark Hashem from District District 18 on Honolulu, on Hawaii. So, Mark, welcome. There you are. Hi, Mark. We can't hear him. Welcome. Thank you for having me here. <laughs> this there. is a first time for me. Great. Great. Well, we don't bite, so it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too far away for you to bite. Yeah. It's a very so, different world on Hawaii. It's a whole different world out here. Yes. Isn't it? So now tell us about Mark. Oh, I'm just a local boy that was born, not raised in Hawaii. I went to Kahumanu, Washington, and McKinley High School. Then I went away for college um, to Oregon for college. Then I went to Japan for graduate school. That made me end up working in Japan, living there for over 10 plus years. After bouncing around, working here and there, I came back to Hawaii, ran for office, and that's and here we the are. long and short, yes, <laughs> the long and short of it. Now, but your mother's Japanese. Yes. Yes, yes she is. So actually, um, it's being in Japan has given me a very perspective. It's a very different perspective because um, I remember, I always tell this story. I remember when I was in, I was in college and I came back to Honolulu right after college and I was walking around all, um, downtown Honolulu thinking, wow, this, it's so vibrant. There's so much going on. Then later on, my life took me to Tokyo. I'm working in Tokyo, which is a hundred times bigger than downtown Honolulu. And then after about 15 years, I popped back in Hawaii and I'm standing on the exact same corner. And I remember thinking to myself, wow, there's nothing going on here. <laughs> so it's all a matter of perspective, right? Perspective. Yes. So, yeah. Well, so. so, so now you brought your mother back here? No, my mom was here the whole time. Oh, she was she, here the whole She time. stayed here. I just. Oh, you're the, the one road. that left. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. So Hashem is, what is Hashem? That's not Japanese. Hashem is, no, it's actually Lebanese. Uh, Lebanese. It, oh. Yes, it actually means God. So the oh. word in Hebrew. And the, oh, here, this, that, the story behind Hashem is on my father's side, he, my grandfather was studying to be a, a Catholic priest. And he was studying to be a Catholic priest. He could speak, read, write five different languages. And right before he's ordained, his four other brothers come to him and said, we're going to America. Do you want to go? So he quits the priesthood, hops on a boat, lands in Boston, has seven kids. My father's the youngest. And my father joins the military, gets stationed in Japan. And that's how you end up with a left. A Lebanese, Lebanese Japanese boy. Oh, and yeah. then he yes, then he gets stationed in Hawaii. So, so now that's how back. I come about. That's how I ended up in Hawaii. So, oh wow, what a trip! <laughs> but you know, I would. But that's bet, the world nowadays, right? It is. I would bet you a fat man that everybody in Hawaii. Now, my great 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 grandfather was none other than. Confederate Civil War General John Bell Hood, the one that the base is named after. So, yeah, we all get mixed up. Um, and I can't resist telling that story that I am a Civil War Confederate monument, right? I am the <laughs> mix between all of those things. So if you want a monument, this is it. Hey. <laughs> so... But let's get to just talk about the legislature. Now, you've been in the legislature 10 years? 
Yes, this is, I just completed my fifth term. Has it really been that long? Wow. Time so goes by so quick. I mean, this last 10 years just zoomed by. Uh, it I, did. I, and when, now in the legislature, you were chair of what? I was what chair of housing. I was, yes. Previously, I was the chair of housing, and now I'm the vice chair of higher education. Yeah. So in Hawaii, housing is probably the biggest problem for everybody. For those with houses, it's property tax. For those with house, without a house, it's how do you make $10 an hour and pay $1,800 a month rent? So, you know, it's like all of the, everybody's got a housing issue. So how do you deal with that? Those different issues, so many different issues with the, at the legislature. Yeah, well, housing, to, affordable housing is basically just funding because uh, the it doesn't pencil to have affordable housing in Hawaii. You, so there's this gap that, to fill that, that gap to make it pencil, the legislature funds that gap so that way we can continue to have affordable housing. Last year, we funded, 70, I believe, $75 million dollars the the last biennium budget on top of that we have about 35 million dollars that goes into the rental housing revolving fund to support uh, affordable housing what yes. is what is called affordable and well, affordable for whom so there's there's tiers of affordable housing you have public housing which is state-run housing, like, you know, Palolo, Mayor Wright, that, that's public housing that's hear. owned and operated by the, the state of Hawaii. Then you have um, rental, you have the affordable, the second class, which I would say workforce housing, which is 60% of the area medium income. Public housing is usually about 30% of the area medium income and below. And workforce housing is usually between 60 to 100% of um, the area medium income. Oh, and okay. So now HUD, HUD, determines, yeah. the, HUD determines the rates. Yes. And yeah, it's even if HUD determines the rate, it's still pretty high. It is because what works in Idaho. The medium the income is totally different than what works in Hawaii. Yes. And even in Hawaii, what works in Honolulu doesn't work in uh, Captain Cook, you know? Yes. yes. We have so, a challenge because we have our land cost is expensive and also our building cost is, is very expensive. So it drives up the cost all together. So we have bigger challenges than anywhere else. We do. <laughs> now, yes. okay, let's go to, you said higher ed, higher education. We have an issue this year that we've never dealt with, and that is getting people back into school, and higher ed would be the universities. Yes. Now, they say they want to do it online, and some people want to go back um, physically into school what how do you deal with that well what the university is trying to do is create a lip is to create a bubble of non-infected students essentially so every student coming in will be tested so their plan right now is to do a combination between online courses and in-person courses So, but you, so the student gets to choose. Is that, is that it? The student gets to choose whether they're going to do physically in there or, or out. There, there are classes. Yes, the student gets to choose. Um, there are classes that cannot be taught online. For example, labs. 
are very great. You, right. you just can't can't do, do it. Yeah. I don't have a chemistry set at my house, so most <laughs> people don't either, right? Or in the dorm. So you the yeah. only place where you can do that is within the lab. So things like that, you need to be on campus. And the university is working through working through um, working through it. They seem I to think be... the bigger challenge is Go ahead. You started uh, talking, we keep um, losing it. Say, I think the bigger challenge is grade school, K through twelve. Oh yes. Oh, I was I was gonna say yeah, grade schools because it's very difficult for kindergarten kindergartners to social distance or to keep them wearing a mask. It's very yeah. No. Little children. I, I I'm glad I don't have to figure that one out. The so. Little children love being with each other. They love the play, the touch, the being with each other. And I don't know how you do that. And the, the more important thing is how do you protect the teachers, the janitors, the, all those other people that are in the building. How do we protect them? Because little kids touch, feel grab you know how do you protect the adults yeah that's that's a challenge i i the way i envision it and i think some schools are actually doing this is to create a bubble so one class doesn't interact with any other class and so if you have an outbreak it's contained to that one class so if you have 12 students it's all contained to there and that's how it you would try to prevent the spread from one class to the next class. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, well, it's still, now, I know that, I, I know you can't do anything about this, but having had children and grandchildren in public schools, August is the hottest month of the year and the schools are not air conditioned. Can't we just push that back to September? I agree. Um, I brought this point up that the cheapest fix for our air conditioning, the, you know, that movement for cooling the classes, the cheapest fix is just to move it from August to September. September. Because That's it. When, yeah. when we were in school, when I was in school, we started in September. So we, we were outside playing. I was outside playing during August. So, and then we, yeah. So we, we maybe had a couple weeks of hot classrooms, but then I, after that, it was done. So. Yeah, but because August is the hottest month of the year. Yes. And Although so, la last huh? year, November was hot too. Oh, it was. Last year was just, oh well. Now, let's talk about the legislature and moving this election to all mail, mailing. Not, not M A L E, but M A I L. <laughs> but listen, and in our district, it is all male. There are no females running. That's for right. Anything out of you. That's right. Natalie Iwasa was the last person running in East Honolulu that I can remember. Yes. And um, so, but that's now. Tell us about why the legislature decided on mailing. I mean, I like it, quite frankly, because I've been doing it by mail for years. Uh, what? Yeah, we can't hear you. Oh, uh, so I think it was last year that the legislature passed uh, the all mail in ballot the election. So there was, nobody knew that we would come into this situation with COVID-19 and this was not on anybody's mind. The whole intent was to increase, um, to, was to increase voter turnout. So with that, with that mindset, we put in all mail in. And just so happened, we're lucky that we did because we got a year to prepare for that for this year. So, um, 
Now let's let's talk about mailing. The ballots will be mailed out when next week. I yes. Think. Yes. Or at, at the end of this week or next week. Um. Uh, yeah, you're right. Ballots will be dropped on the twenty first. So they'll put them in the mails. You should get it by the 21st at home. Now, yes. so if you're not registered, I think the, well, the date has passed, but you can call the clerk's office and make sure you're registered. You can do that today. And that uh, telephone number is 808-768. 3800. Call today to be sure that you're registered. I, I know the date is passed, but do it anyway. <laughs> you you can sure. actually register online, I believe. Yeah, so. but you want to be sure if you think you did or not sure, call and ask. You know, so be sure that you get the ballot. Let's every vote counts. So let's be sure that you do it. That's number one. If they say, well, you, we said we gave you a ballot and you say, well, I didn't get it. Can I get a replacement? Yes, you can. And again, same telephone number, 808-768-3800. That's the clerk's office. Yes, talk to them, tell them, well, I didn't get it. Can I get a replacement? That's where you go. And on the news last night, they said that ballots must be in Busby Postmark. No, they must be in the hands of the clerk's office by seven o'clock on election day, not postmark. So you ought to be sure that it is in the mail or in the drop boxes. Now there are drop boxes all over the island and they are located at public the city parks. Now be sure, be sure that if you put it in the drop box because they pick them up every day, but you wanna be sure that it's there because parks close and they lock them up. So you wanna be sure that you get it in early because they do make up a, a round every day to pick up the ballots. And what else do I need to tell you? You can go to Honolulu Holly and in person or Kapolei Holly and do it in person. But quite frankly, I've been doing it by mail for years and they've always gotten it right. So <laughs> I can't imagine that they wouldn't. But please make sure you go through all of this. Every vote counts. Everyone, that's what makes us a democracy is that every vote counts. And everybody, please make sure you vote. Now, I'm not gonna tell you who to vote for, but I do want you to vote. That is your option. You don't have to tell me. So. You know, some, you know, my wife is from Peru. Mm -hmm. In Peru, everybody votes because if you don't, if you don't vote, you get fined. There's a there's an actual financial penalty for not voting. We should yes. implement that in, in the United and, and States. And some places it's a holiday. Yes. And in France it's a holiday to vote the whole day. But now we don't have to worry about that since it's by mail, so you don't have to take time off from work. You know, just yeah, we, it would it would be good if we if it was a federal mandate and you could get, let's say $20 back in your tax returns just for turning in a slip, right? Because that's right. basically what they do in Peru. Oh, really? Uh, hmm. So we could yeah. just, yeah. I just, that's a great well, idea. In Peru, if you don't vote, you get fined. Right. So if you don't send in your little return you you get fined is that it 
Yes. How do they know? Yes, I don't know exactly how it works in Peru, but um, they're fine. Hmm. That you got to ask my wife. You have to have her on your show. I will. <laughs> so, um, yeah, because that's and interesting. You probably she's a wine sommelier, so you huh? probably get a lot of people watching too. A wine sommelier. Yeah. Are they still open? Uh, yes. For some strange reason, alcohol is an essential product. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, for people that are locked in, yeah. Uh, so is cannabis, medical cannabis. Oh, yes, that's essential. true. Now it's yep. medical cannabis now. Oh, I wanted to bring up something. Also, um, voting is really important. The census is also equally, equally important because everybody should... Uh, answer your census because for every one percent that does not respond hawaii loses 40 million dollars per year mm -hmm. so one per for one percent over 10 years that's half almost half a billion dollars so yes. please everybody answer your census or make sure everybody in your family has answered their census or everybody you know answer your census because that's vital funding for the I, state of is. Hawaii. And, and if everybody in Hawaii participated, we could have a third CD, third district. A uh, CD3, yes. yes. Where would we cut that out, I guess? We can just make East Honolulu. <laughs> <laughs> but you're in the legislature and you're gonna have to redistrict next year anyway. Yes, that's right, that's right. Yeah. And, but, if everybody did, now I have talked to people because we are a partner with the census, but I've talked to people who say, oh, well, I'm not an American. Well, it doesn't matter that you're not an American. You live here, you drive on the roads, you drink the water, yeah. you, you know. Yeah. So yes, it does make a difference. Uh, status, immigration status is not, is not an issue or irrelevant for the census, right? Didn't yeah. the Supreme Court actually throw that out? They threw they it tried, out, yeah. The administration mm -hmm. tried to put immigration the status on the yeah. census question, but they, they that yeah. got actually taught. Yeah, so, um, where are we now? Census and voting, and I am going to call your wife. <laughs> Those are the things you gave me. Now, okay, why, now let's tell me this. So this is for the audience, not for me. Why should we vote for you? Why oh. should we give you another time to do this? Now, I think, of course, but, you know, I'm prejudiced. So go ahead, tell us why we should vote. I, have, I always have a hard time talking about this. I, I guess, because it feels like I'm bragging. I always have a hard time talking about this. But I, I always like to say that I've been, very good, good for the district that I brought essential infrastructure needs to the district. A lot of things that people don't see, like freeway, the freeway service patrol got expanded to East Honolulu. Prior to this, they only went up to about the University of Hawaii. And now they go all the way down to Ainakoa and they turn around and go back. So this was in 2012, we put, or I helped allocate, I think it was $1.2 million additional funding for the freeway service patrol. And I worked with the Department of Transportation so that way they expanded to the end of the freeway. And now there it is. So and small stuff like that. Um, and the highway, Kalani Island. Yes, we repaid. We repaved Kalani Anole Highway. The funding first was put in in 2010. That was, that's, yeah, 2000, 2011, we had the first phase funding. But when we were going through the process of, when I was working with the Department of Transportation, I re, it came clear that their, their process was only to do from Aina Haina out going east towards Kokohead area. And which left from the freeway to Aina Haina 
of unpaid. So I got the state department of transportation to do that front portion of from the freeway to Aina Haina. And that, that was recently done last year. So what we did with that was a temp, um, it was basically a, a two inch top to bring the life cycle of the, the whole road to the same life cycle. Because prior to that, they did that section earlier, uh, a few years earlier. And they would, since there is such a big gap between the first phase and the second phase, they were gonna, it's, it would be staggered. So from now, the whole life cycle of the highway is one is road going all the way down. Very good. And the school? Oh, yes. Um, <laughs> I'm a former wrestler. I wrestled for McKinley High School and Pacific University. But um, yeah, we got, anyways, I'm a sports fan. I believe sports is good for kids because it kept me out of trouble and high schoolers, because if high school kids have idle time, they're getting into trouble. I'm, so the only thing that kept me in school was because I played sports. So the girls' locker room is, uh, Kalani basically didn't have a girls' locker room. Kaiser, for that matter, too. At Kaiser High School, the girls were changing in the closets and in the classrooms. They left their bags all over the place. The same situation for Kalani. So we worked over the years to get a new girls' locker room in Kalani and a new girls' locker room in Kaiser High School. And I remember the Kalani wrestling team was actually practicing in the, the cafeteria. So when I went there to go work out with them, I'm like, what the hell are you guys doing in the cafeteria? So, but they didn't have a wrestling room. So that's why now they have a wrestling room right next to the girls' locker room. So we kind of put that all in one, one big project. So. Yeah, I'm kind of happy for that. Now we just got to work on the football, Kalani's football team to actually get, well, they actually started winning a lot more than they did before. So. Yeah. Well, listen, now we have a minute left. So tell me now again, why we should vote for you. Oh, why? Well, I, you got a project you, you want to continue? What, what have you got? Oh yes, um, I always working on stuff. There is the, the track and field for Kalani High School that we're still going through. Um, I'm trying to remember Kaiser High School, the redoing of the boys locker room. The next phase will be um, Kalani High School's boys locker room that needs to be redone. The boys locker room is the same, exactly the same since the 1950s. And, but yeah. I really enjoy being the representative. Uh, it's very rewarding. This year, uh, our main focus really was to help people get their was to help people get their unemployment insurance. Uh, my staff helped countless individuals get their unemployment insurance, and it was it's such a great feeling to be able to help because once the check comes in, and now they're they can pay their rent or they can pay their mortgage and they're not evicted. And you get, we got every countless of people saying thank you for helping them get their, their financial payments because what is it? Almost 30% of the people are unemployed now. So it's, it's huge a very, and it's I, getting bigger. I enjoy yeah. it. It's very rewarding. And I want to thank people for allowing me. Yes. So I want well, to thank everybody for allowing me to be in the position and, uh, continue to continue to serve the district. Well, I thank you also for serving our district, for being available to everybody, for answering the phone yourself. Oh, <laughs> yes, I do many times. <laughs> yes, and thank you again for taking the time to be with us today. And remember, everybody, you must vote, not just for this gentleman, but across the board everybody all 51 house members are up and half of the senate is up for re-election so you must you must and vote so thank you again mark and we will see you next time